Hello guys, my name is Coding Vampire. So we are going to start a new chapter, Data Handling. So I'll give you a brief introduction of this chapter. In the previous chapter, getting started with C++, we used two types of data, integer data type and floating data type. But in this chapter, we'll learn more about different types of data and how to use them. Concept of data type. Data can of many types, example, character, integer, real, string, etc. Since the data to be dealt with are many types, the programming language must provide ways and facilities to handle all type of data. For example, we have meter, centimeter, kilometer to measure the same quantity length, but in different condition, one unit is more convenient than the other. So we have different unit for measuring the length. Similarly, we have different type of data in programming. C++ like any other language provide ways and facilities to handle different type of data by providing data type. So what is the definition of data type? Data type are means to identify the type of data and associated operation of handling it. So I'll explain you what does this definition mean when we are doing some program. C++ data type are of two type. Fundamental type also called atomic data type. Derived data type. There are five fundamental data types. Char stands for character. Int stands for integer. Float stands for floating point. Double stands for double floating point. Void stand for valueless. So we'll discuss each of them in the next section. Fundamental data type. Fundamental data type are those that are not composed of other data type. In the physics class 11th, you in the chapter second chapter you learned that there are seven basic quantities, uh, and time and length are one of them. So time and length are basic quantities because they are not derived from other quantity okay so the first fundamental data type that we are going to discuss is integer integer are whole number without any fractional part example 0 34 and they can even be negative number minus 35 etc integer can be positive or negative it takes 2 bytes of memory. So remember that integer data type occupy 2 bytes of memory. Char data type. It can store any character from character set. So character set is a set of valid character that a language can identify. If a character is stored in character variable, its value is equivalent to the ASCII code of that character. So if Please refer to the chapter data representation to understand what is ASCII code. Floating data type. A number having fractional part is called a floating point number. Example pi is equal to 3.14. The decimal point signal that it is a floating point number and not an integer. Floating point number represent real number. It takes 4 bytes of memory. So integer take 2 bytes of memory and floating point takes 4 bytes of memory. So obviously the range of floating point number will be greater than that of integer. Advantage, advantages of floating point number over integer are floating point number can represent value between integer. So integer data type cannot represent 1.1 but whereas floating point can represent 1.1 floating point represent a much greater range of value because the memory occupied by floating point number is greater than that of integer disadvantages of floating point number over integer is floating point operation are usually slow than integer operation double data type the data type double is also used for handling floating point number but it is treated as a distinct data type because it occupies twice as memory as 
type flow that is 8 byte of memory so floating data type occupy 4 bytes of memory but whereas double data type occupied 8 bytes of memory floating point number with much larger range and precision so double have much larger range and can have many digit after the decimal point the type double is larger and slower than type float void data type for empty sets of value and non returning function it is used as a return type for function that do not return a value so we'll move on to this example problem write a program to find the sum of two number using int main as a function okay so what i want you to do write a program to find the sum of two number using void main as the function but i'm going to write a program using int main and i'll explain you the difference between int main and void main hash include io stream dot h hash include ponio dot h then i'll write int main parenthesis just remember that after main you do not write semicolon then i'll write clear screen then i'll declare variable int a comma b see out enter any two number less than less than and l which is used to go to a new line c in greater than greater than a greater than greater than b this is known as cascading now see how i'll display the answer less than less than sum of the two number is less than less than a plus b get ch now when we are using int main as a function we'll write additional statement return 0 then i'll close the program now when we are what does this statement mean int main parenthesis this means that this main function would return a variable with a data type of integer now in this statement return 0 this means that this function will not return a value but it's not necessary that uh, this function will not return a value whenever we'll write 0 return 0 with that means the function will not return a value if this if like i'll write return c then this function would return the variable c we'll learn more about uh, the return statement in the chapter function but whereas in void main void main we do not write the statement return 0 because the meaning of void itself tells the compiler that this function will not return a value so you can omit the statement return zero so i'm um, wrapping up this video as always i will see you guys in the next tutorial